In the third video uh, in this module, we'll uh, finish up our focus on animation with some miscellaneous topics, including labels, which we've already seen using the use of status labels a couple of times. Uh, we'll also discuss floating labels and floor labels. We'll then demonstrate drawing in the facility view, uh, how to just use Simeo drawing tools to uh, add things to the facility view. And then finally, we'll finish up by looking at cre how to create new symbols. And there are two methods that we will uh, look at briefly. Simeo drawing tools, so we will use Simeo itself to create new symbols. And secondly, we'll look a little bit at a product called Google SketchUp that we can use to make complex 3D objects and then import those into Simeo. Let's start with the model that we ended the previous video with. And you can see that we have a shop floor, a simple shop floor, where what we did was we took a JPEG image of the layout and imported that as a symbol uh, to give us locations to place uh, objects uh, where they would appear in the shop. We also imported objects from Trimble 3D Warehouse to represent the board that we're making, the table saw, the drill press, and the static symbol representing the shelf. And then we moved the respective queues around, the processing queue, the input buffer queue, uh, so that we could uh, display um, the animation as you would expect to see in a real shop floor. And now what we'd like to do is use, uh, discuss the use of labels. Uh, we've seen labels previously where we attach status labels. So for example, we would select an object and we could create a status label that is connected, in this case, to the drill press object. And then we could display dynamic information such as input buffer, contents, and the status label will then uh, give the number of entities that are in the input buffer uh, for the drill press. And we also showed how we could have standalone uh, uh, status labels that were not connected to a particular object and then we could use to just uh, display uh, the results of a generic expression. So in this case I can sync one, input buffer, number entered, and so the status label uh, now shows the number of parts, uh, the number of boards in our case that depart the system. So this would be the uh, number of, of parts produced in our shop floor. So in this case, the status information is actually uh, about a particular object, in this case, sync one, but it's not directly, t the, the uh, status label is not directly connected as it is with the status label we did for the drill press. And so when I move the drill press object around, we can see that the uh, status label moves with it. And in the case of our standalone, it does not. And importantly, when I have a status label that's connected or attached to an object, we don't have to specify the object name in the expression. When we have a status label that's not connected to an object, we do have to specify uh, the object uh, in the expression, assuming that we are going to uh, uh, include uh, an object in the, in the expression. Uh, one other note, we can attach status labels to entities. So for example, I can go to my default entity and do the status label ID, and then the status label will travel with the entity. So in this case, I'm uh, displaying uh, on the label the identification number of that entity. The other types of labels that we will consider are floating labels and floor labels. And a floating label draws a, uh, a simple text string label in the facility view. So you can see I placed it uh, and well, I need to stop the model first. So I place my text and then I can type um, a simple string of information. This is a label and it will show up uh, similar to the labels on objects. And so when I go to 3D mode, we can see that the label um, remains upright. And so you can actually uh, see the label just like you see the, uh, the labels are displayed just as the object labels uh, that we see uh, for the default uh, or for the objects in the standard library. The floor label uh, allows you to draw a label that uh, 
is on the floor and so you look at in 3D mode and you can see that the label uh, appears to be uh, written on the floor uh, in the facility view. And so as shown you can uh, have uh, tag so you can have bold, italic, you can use colors. Um, the way to edit the text uh, uh, involves two things. We're going to edit the basic text and so when we place the label you can see the syntax um, and you can type you know whatever you want. Jeff's shop floor for example. Um, and we can use colors. This is blue not typing so well today and red and then you can display uh, other information also and so you can have the generic text and it's controlled by the number of uh, characters per line so you can increase uh, or decrease the uh, the display size and note also in the uh, floor labels you can display expressions uh, by using the um, braces. So I can do as uh, the example here says, time now to get the current simulation runtime. I need to uh, increase my character so I can actually see it. And there's our uh, time now. So when I run the model, we can see that that uh, is increasing. So with floor labels, uh, we can have uh, an arbitrary amount of text and that incorporates uh, formatting and also incorporates um, uh, Simio expressions. Next we'll take a look at um, drawing within the facility view and so you have the set of drawing tools that we see here. We've seen some of the uh, labels and the symbols and, and color before. So for example if I want to draw walls around my shop floor I can grab the rectangle tool and draw the wall, the two-dimensional wall, and then I can specify the object height. So let's say we have a three meter wall and then when I look in 3D mode you, know, you can see our wall. I can then go and, well, let's draw the uh, other wall here also. So I go to my uh, left side wall and we'll also make it three meters. And look in 3D mode and we see that our, my, oops, uh, this is where we can see that we have lowered the, the floor. Remember, recall we did that so that the objects would sit on, on top of it. So the wall is actually at the zero Y position and the floor is uh, slightly below that. Uh, we can use uh, colors so we can recolor the wall if you want to have, say, gray walls. Uh, we can uh, easily do that. Uh, we can apply textures. So if I want to have, say, a brick wall, I can apply the brick uh, texture and you can see that it applies the texture uh, to um, the inside and outside um, of, of the wall object. So we have uh, several different uh, textures that are available um, in, the default, um, uh, in the default installation. So by drawing, uh, we also have arbitrary uh, drawing tools that we can uh, draw circles and ellipses and, and, and so on. And we do the same mechanism where we draw the in, in the XZ uh, plane and then we specify the height of the object uh, in the Y plane. So in addition to drawing uh, or adding drawing elements to the facility view, uh, which we just did here, where we added our two walls and our uh, elliptical 3D thing, uh, we can also create our own symbols. And so if I go to model and uh, symbols, I can create a new symbol and Simeo brings up the uh, drawing uh, ribbon that we saw when we were in, um, that we were in the facility view. And so I can use these same tools. So for example, I can take a rectangle, create a rectangular object uh, in two dimensions, and then specify the object height. So let's make this two meters tall. And when I look in 3D, you see that I have a, um, a, a, a 3D cube type object. So I can then add uh, arbitrary curves. 
So I can uh, have curve objects. I can have uh, closed curve objects where we create the uh, closed 3D space and specify the height. Again, let's make this two, uh, two meters. And we look at this in 3D. Uh, we can see that we have our, our, our curve object, which is only two dimensional, and our two uh, 3D objects. And these are defined as a Simio symbol. So let's call this new symbol. I don't know what it is, uh, not particularly artistic. So we will go back to our model. And now we can use the place symbol feature to place the newly created symbol. You can see we made it uh, quite big. So let me reduce its size a little bit. And then when we look in 3D mode, uh, we can see our two three dimensional objects and then our, our curve. So you can use the object, uh, the I'm sorry, the symbol uh, building and editing capability. Uh, if you are artistic, again, you have the same features available that we saw previously. I can apply uh, textures uh, and so on and create my own objects that can then be applied or my own symbols, which can be applied to uh, any of the objects uh, within the model. So for example, I could go to sync one and say I want my sync to have the symbol that I just created. And so now our sync object uh, animation is now this uh, strange looking symbol that we uh, that we created. So let me undo this. I'm going to just use control Z to get back my normal uh, uh, symbol for the sync object. And the last thing we want to look at in this video is how to create our own 3D symbols using uh, Google uh, SketchUp. So Google SketchUp is a standalone product. Uh, there's a free version available and there's also a professional version. And what SketchUp lets you do is create these 3D objects uh, similar to what we see in Trimble 3D Warehouse. So there, when you open by default, there's a person uh, object that gives you some scale. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to do a very simple drawing uh, of a rectangle. I'm going to go and then specify that my rectangle is three feet by three feet. So just type three by three and now we have a, a three by three square and I can use the extrude tool to extrude uh, that square up and we'll also make that uh, three feet. So now we have a three feet, three foot by three foot cube. And to our object, we will just add a, a couple other features. So I'm going to go and draw another rectangle on the face and then use the extrude tool to extrude that out. And then I'll draw a circle on the top and use the extrude tool to, uh, to extrude that up. And so now we have a very simple 3D object of something, nothing in particular. And I can now save this. So I'm going to go and save the file. I'm just going to use the default untitled SKP and import that into Simio. So I can go and pick an object. Let's pick uh, the sync again. And I want to import the symbol. And the symbol that I want to import is the one that I just created. So scroll down here and here is our untitled SKP. And Simio will then read that in and open the uh, dialog box for uh, importing that we've seen several times before. And it asks me the forward direction and there you can see the 3D object that we just created and place uh, on uh, as the symbol for the sync object. Now that I have it here, I can do any of the uh, things that we have seen before with objects. So I can go in and change its color. I can go in and add additional symbols to the list and change the look of these and uh, uh, and so on. So we've created the symbol in, trim in Google SketchUp, imported it, and now uh, it behaves as just any other symbol that we have inside Simio. Note also when I leave, so now I'm in back in Google SketchUp, it asks, do we want to share this in 3D Warehouse? So this is exactly how uh, all of the objects we see in the, in the warehouse uh, get created, or most of the objects, is people use them in Google SketchUp, and then you can go ahead and, and share that model.
And so in this video, we've seen how we can uh, significantly enhance our uh, animation by using uh, the drawing tools and uh, Google SketchUp to uh, create our own objects. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm not particularly artistic, but I think you can see the flexibility and power of these drawing tools, and so people who are artistic uh, can use that talent to create uh, very nice animations for their Simeo models.